Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Welcome to the Lord's house on this Sunday morning. We're glad that you are here. And uh, when it's gorgeous outside, the corn is taller than I remember seeing it in the last four years. And the beans look like bushes. So it's pretty amazing. God is good all the time. There are a number of announcements that are in your bulletin, the ones that I want to make you aware of. Uh, Steve Hess and the Southern Salvation will be returning to the Methodist Church in September for their 11 a.m. worship service. So if you want to listen to some gospel. And there'll be a lunch afterwards. We have our hymn sing on August 30th. That's a week that uh, I won't be present. I'll be at continuing education. And there for the last two weeks has been an inserting your bulletin that's no longer there but it's up here if you want to get a copy on one side it's got lines for you to put your favorite hymns and uh, I encourage you to do so so that the worship committee knows and they can talk about what hymns they want to play um, and if you have problems putting figuring out what your favorites I guess you can do like one person did and I think there was 18 they just wrote the numbers. So, um, but your choice on that. On the other side of this, as a reminder, is, is a Bible study survey. Um, ask whether you, what you'd be most interested in a Bible study that was more verse by verse, topical, relational, and some times. Uh, and I'm getting some good information on that. Um, typical of Presbyterians, I guess, uh, were split right now exactly between uh, two of the choices with a couple of votes for the third one thrown in um, so we're, we're pretty set on the time uh, which is most likely going to be five o'clock so but uh, get your vote in if you're considering joining uh, and and being here and uh, pray about uh, where we can best hold it and when we can best hold it Let's see, uh, the Methodist Church is considering having a VBS on Saturday, October 3rd. They're going to have a meeting about that. And there's also looking for help for the Tuesday Good News Club, although they're going to have to rename it since it's going to be on Thursdays. Uh, yeah, we're going to have the Tuesday Good News Club on Thursdays. And uh, they're looking for people to help with crafts, games, and making treats. You can let Amy know, or me know, or Sue Sherman. Uh, any one of us know. And uh, we could certainly use uh, your help. This is for the kids. It's the one day a week. It's about a 30, 45 minute thing. Are there any other announcements that we need to make at this time? Well, seeing none, then let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship as we listen to the prelude.
Now, if you'd stand, if you're able, and join me in the responsive call to worship. O oh Lord, some of us ask for your acceptance because we are alone. Some of us ask for your truth because we are confused. All of us ask for a sense of your presence because we have come here to be with you. We worship you, and Praise the Lord. Our first hymn today is hymn number one, or eleven rather, Praise to the Lord the Almighty. and the smooth taste of strong wine deceive you. Like 
You will see hallucinations and have delirium tremens. And you will say foolish, silly things that would embarrass you no end when sober. And afterwards you will say, I didn't even know it when they beat me up. Let's go and have another drink. Envy, murder, drunkenness, wild parties, and all that sort of thing. Let me tell you again, as I have before, that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. Don't act thoughtlessly, but try to find out and do whatever the Lord wants you to do. Watch out. Don't let my sudden coming catch you unawares. Don't let me find you living in careless ease, carousing and drinking and occupied with the problems of this life like all the rest of the world. Whether too much wine or too much food or too much TV or too much of anything, we all tend to lose track sometimes of what's important in life, become addicted to the worldly things. And we all fail and fall short of the glory of God. And that's a good thing because it makes us all level and equal. We all equally need Christ. And we also all equally gain the gift of forgiveness in Jesus Christ if we simply repent of our sins and trust Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And so in that spirit and by the Spirit, I would ask you to confess your sins to God. First by saying the instant prayer of confession which is printed in your bulletin, and then by coming singly and silently before the throne. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, as you still come to us, an eternal presence walking upon the moving waters of time, help us to recognize your approach and come to you. In our sin, we are weak and fearful. Forgive us, Lord. Give us the faith and the courage to do things your way. Help your people to be done with old motivations and our sad, sin-scarred reactions. Let your Spirit lift us to new levels of vision and forgiveness and trust, so that your church may show the world once again what it really means to be human. Hear the good news, and the good news is this, that in Jesus Christ we are forgiven. Our sins are cast as far apart as the east is from the west, and God remembers them no more. May you know in your heart the peace of Christ and celebrate the victory won and the forgiveness for all. Glory be to the Father. Please be seated. 
And now, may we prepare to hear God's word as we say the unison prayer for illumination. God, our helper, by your Holy Spirit, open our minds that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may be led into your truth and taught your will. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our first scripture reading today is Psalm 111. It can be found on page 952 in your pew Bible. This is a psalm that praises God and speaks to the time when they were post-exilic. They had talk about the assembly which is in the synagogues rather than the temple. And it gives instruction even while it gives praise to God. Psalm 111. Praise the Lord. I will extol the Lord with all my heart in the counsel of the upright and in the assembly. Great are the works of the Lord. They are pondered by all who delight in them. Glorious and majestic are his deeds, and his righteousness endures forever. He has caused his wonders to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and compassionate. He provides food for those who fear him and remembers his covenant forever. He has shown his people the power of his works, giving them the lands of other nations. The works of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. They are steadfast forever and ever, done in faithfulness and uprightness. He has provided redemption for his people. He ordained his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All who follow his precepts have good understanding. To him belongs eternal praise. Our second scripture reading, I'm going to do the gospel. The gospel of John, verses 51 to 58. This is a continuation of what was read last week. As Jesus continues with his hard saying, and we see the way people react to his instruction. Sometimes it explains perhaps why he spoke so often in parable. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Then the Jews began to argue sharply amongst themselves, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, I tell you the truth, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is real food, and my blood is real drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so the one who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Your forefathers ate men and died, but he who feeds on this bread will live forever. Our final scripture reading today comes from Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 to 21. This is the end of a long section that tells us how to live as disciples and how to be faithful witnesses, how to live with each other within the church. Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Do not get drunk on wine which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit. Speak to one another with psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. 
Sing and make music in your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. We have talked about hard sayings. We've talked about hard truths. And now it seems as we finish this section in Ephesians, we get hard instructions. They sometimes just don't make sense. Now some of them do. When it talks about not getting drunk on wine. But speaking to one another in psalms, ends in spiritual songs. I can't help but think of, you know, an opera or a musical whenever I read that. And just imagine everybody singing all their words to each other. I don't think that's exactly what he meant. He's talking about having a particular attitude and practice in your life. And really, while he only spoke of wine here in this particular place, this particular passage, if you look through the whole section, he, he talks about a lot of different things, different ways to live as children of the light. And it seems kind of impossible in many ways. Jesus spoke of living in him, eating his flesh, drinking his blood. He hadn't died yet and been resurrected. They didn't understand on one level. They did on another. People were there. Over 5,000 had been fed at the last sitting. And Jesus was kind of irritated because folks were just coming for the free food. And he gives them this saying, and the people have to make a choice. They make a decision to deliberately turn away. They reject Christ because of his words here that says many disciples and I put that in quotes fell away in the passage from the Psalms we read that the precepts are trustworthy that the works of the Lord are pondered by all who delight in them that we are supposed to fear God because that's the beginning of wisdom. We're to understand his precepts. And it all seems at times to be impossible. These are hard instructions to follow. I mean, in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus gives so many comments. We didn't read from that today, but it's pretty well known. You know, he says that if you lust after somebody else in your heart, you've committed adultery already. If you're angry with somebody, you've committed murder. Boy, that one I'm in trouble with. It just seems like things are impossible for us to do. There's a lot of impossible things in this world, or seemingly impossible. Let me tell you a story about something that man did and succeeded at. In 1534, Charles V, the Holy Roman Emperor and King of Spain, suggested for the first time that a canal be built in Panama. The French were the first to try the impossible undertaking, beginning construction on their canal in January 1st, 1880. After working more than 12 arduous years on the project, and after the death of an estimated 22,000 workers, the French gave up in defeat. The United States later bought out the French equipment and excavations and began to work on the canal themselves on May 1904. The canal was finally opened on August 15, 1914, one year ahead of schedule. At the time the canal was completed, the designers estimated that the most traffic the canal could ever support was 80 million tons per year. In 2005, over 278.8 million tons of cargo moved through the Panama Canal. This is from Wikipedia. It's an impossible task, 
finally completed by people who wouldn't give up, who wouldn't quit, and who wouldn't let the obstacles and impossibility of the task ahead of them cause them to quit. And the results today are beyond the designer's, the designer's imagination. Likewise, God doesn't call us to do just little things. He hasn't called you to, do, to a diminishing, shrinking, receding, retreating assignment. He hasn't called you to retirement. He's called you to be a world shaker and a world changer. He's called you to do the impossible. He's called you to change the world. And we start by changing ourselves. As we think of the assignment God has given us, the question lies before us, how do we do what God has called us to do? How do we become good disciples and make disciples? How do we avoid the failure that others have known and make the most of our lives? How do we accomplish what seems to be impossible? Well, first, we need to learn to have a heart of praise and to bring glory to God. We lead others to Christ and we bring glory to God and we change the world by our example through the way we live. My friend, if you live a life that is different from the world, when you respond differently than everyone else around you does, you're being a witness and helping to change the world through your example. Now we do that in part, as I said, by having a heart of praise. We don't have to go around singing to everybody we meet. I know some people that would say if they started singing that it would drive people away. But we do have to have a song in our hearts that Paul speaks of. A song of praise and thanksgiving. We have to understand the gift that God gave us and be appreciative. If we think we're entitled to something, then we'll never be thankful. We don't deserve it, the grace we receive. We're not entitled to it. But God loved each one of us so much that he gave us the gift of salvation anyways. However undeserving we might be. And that should dwell in your hearts to know that God loves you so much, making you joyful and to sing psalms and spiritual songs in your heart. It's been over a month now since the vacation Bible school down in Wapolo. And I've still got the phrase of one of their songs that runs through my, my head and my heart at, the, at times. From the song, One, Things Remain, One Thing Remains. His love never fails, it never gives up, and it never runs out on me. His love. So you should have a heart of praise and a heart of joy and sing spiritual songs. And that should shape your life and your reactions. We want to set apart the Messiah as Lord in our hearts. Even as Peter said in 1 Peter 3, and always be ready to give a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. You see, Peter says that you and I are always to be ready to give a defense, to give a reason for the hope that is within us. After people see that we act and react differently than other people, after they notice that we talk differently and love differently, that we are ready to be witnessed, to tell others why we act the way we do. God has given us a seemingly impossible mission to be and make disciples. We use our example and our witness to help accomplish that mission. And we teach. We need to teach each other first. Those who have been Christ followers for a long time need to teach those who have been Christ followers for a short time. Older women are to teach younger women. Older men are to teach younger men. It's called mentoring. It's a big thing in certain circles these days. 
whole organizations like Big Brothers Big Sisters are predicated on that concept. And if the world can understand that, then certainly we as Christians should be able to. And you should always be looking for someone to help in their faith, to teach one another. We make disciples by example, by witness, and by teaching. And in order to teach the Word, you need to know the Word. You need to study the Word. This is where we find out what God's precepts are that the psalmist spoke of. This is where we find out who Christ is, that we might know Him better. And this is where we find out the parameters of our goals that God has set for us. So we study, and we learn, and we teach, and we have joyful hearts. Now, these may all be things that are good to do, but everybody gets tired. Everybody gets frustrated. Everybody hits a wall. And it seems like we've gone as far as we can, and to do anything more is impossible. But let me give you some hope. The Holy Spirit provides strength to do the impossible. The Holy Spirit works in people's hearts. He took a weak, frightened Peter and caused him to stand boldly and preach. He took a skeptical crowd and caused them to want to know this Jesus Peter proclaimed in Acts 2. He gives us the ability to live wisely. As Paul asks in Ephesians. You know, he gives us the ability to make the most of our time. He gives us the ability to make the most of our relationships. Most of what Ephesians is about. Relationships with God, relationships to the church, relationships to each other. Wives to husbands, husbands to wives, children to parents. Parents to children. Even workers to employers and employers to workers. It's all in there. And the Holy Spirit gives us the strength to live out those instructions. My friends, God through the Holy Spirit working in you can change you and thus change the world. But we have to do one thing on our own that is seemingly the most impossible of all. And that means we have to give control up to God. So much of our lives, everybody's lives, is all about trying to control the world around us. To control the people around us. To control ourselves. It's hard to give up control. I mean, even in the, the garden, Adam and Eve. In Genesis 3, when the serpent spoke to Eve, and he talked to her, about what God had said, the command God had given. God was in control and he said, well, if you eat of the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, then you will be like God. And that sounded good. Because we want to be in control. And we need to give it up. And give it to the Holy Spirit. And there are signs that you are controlled by the Holy Spirit. A person controlled by the Holy Spirit is joyful. As noted in Ephesians 5.19, the scriptures we read today. With all those songs and psalms and hymns in our hearts. You're thankful. As it said in Ephesians 5.20. A person filled with the Spirit sees the hand of God behind every gift and is thankful for what he has and what's been given him. A person who's controlled by the Holy Spirit is submissive. That goes beyond where we read today in 21 to 33. In Luke 22, 26, Jesus said, It must not be like that among you. On the contrary, whoever is greatest among you must become like the youngest and whoever leads like the one serving. You see, we're to think of others as more important than ourselves. 
So that doesn't mean submissive in the way of whatever you say, dear. But rather that we're willing to sacrifice our pride in order to serve others. Paul says, be filled with, be controlled by the Holy Spirit. Together we have seen why we should and how to tell if we are. So let us look now at how we are. What must we do to be filled with the Holy Spirit? Well, first, don't grieve the Holy Spirit. If I allow my lusts and passions to control me, then the Holy Spirit is not controlling me. You can't be controlled by wine and be controlled by the Holy Spirit at the same time. You can't be controlled by the internet, by the news, by whatever is, by Facebook. That's a big one today. You can't be controlled by your phones. You know, there was a cartoon a couple years back that I, I, I read in the newspaper. And it's Zitz. I don't know if you know that one. And it showed a, a yearbook picture of the sun. And he had his head down and thumbs like this in the yearbook picture. And the parents were upset. And they were going to yell at him and they wanted to get another picture taken until they actually looked at the rest of the yearbook. And they shows the picture in every single one of the pictures. And come on, you can't tell me that you don't see it all the time on the streets even here in Morning Sun and certainly in the malls and in schools. I substitute taught some. You know, they're all going down the hall because that's supposedly the only time they're allowed to use their phones. You're being controlled by your passion and your lust. So you grieve the Holy Spirit. You don't want to quench the Holy Spirit or stifle it. The Holy Spirit is within me, stimulating, giving ideas, producing thoughts and making suggestions. Every time I refuse or reject them, every time I say, wait a minute, I want to do this first, I'm quenching the Spirit. You need to realize that He is living in you. He's with you everywhere you go, every step of the way. You are a sanctuary or a dwelling place, a temple of the Holy Spirit. And you need to listen closely to His leading. If you ever sense a sudden desire to read your Bible, go and do it at once. For that is the Holy Spirit working in you. Obey Him. Do it. If you feel called to pray, go and do it. And we need to pray more than we do, I think. I think that if we did, the church and the world would both be very different place right now. Don't put off obeying and doing what He's called you to do. The more you listen and obey, the more He will prompt you. And you need to listen to Him speak through the Bible. As I noted, you have to know the Word. God's Word speaks to us through the Holy Spirit. The Bible is not holy in and of itself. Otherwise, every single person who read it would be converted. Every single person who read it would understand. But it is through the work of the Holy Spirit. And you need to be open to the Holy Spirit's prompting and instruction. The Holy Spirit speaks God's will to us, often through His Word. If you want to be controlled by the Holy Spirit, look for His promptings and guidance in the Bible. You know, God has given us a great mission. Sometimes a seemingly impossible mission. To be faithful disciples in a world that is so full of distractions. And to make disciples in every nation. And even in the town of Morning Sun. He's given us the seemingly impossible task to be Christ followers living like Jesus. He's called us to be fellow laborers and builders with Him in the kingdom of God. He's given us a great vision. 
one which even the gates of hell can't stand against. But in order to do that, he's also given us a great helper, the Holy Spirit, living in and through us, controlling us. Whether or not you allow him to do so is your call. You can be more than you ever imagined. You can be used in a great way, no matter what your age, no matter what your situation. You can be a mover and shaker, a lifesaver, a kingdom builder, and a world changer if you allow the Holy Spirit to direct you. You know, Friday, yesterday, two days ago in the morning, I had to service at the nursing home. And I had to get and I gave a similar message and in that said that God can use you no matter where you are and what your challenges and obstacles. I want you to think for a moment. If you think that you're useless or you think that you're past your time, if you think you don't have the gifts, that the obstacles are too great, and consider what some other people have faced. And they too are usable by God. How much more so you. You can be a mover and shaker, a lifesaver, a kingdom builder, and a world changer if you allow the Holy Spirit to direct you. Don't settle for a second-rate life. Don't settle for making no mark on this world. Don't settle for a plain vanilla existence agreeing with good enough. Get in it to win it and be all that God has called you to be. You remember the example I gave in the beginning of the Panama Canal? After the canal was completed, after working on that seemingly impossible mission, the men who built that canal wrote a song. And they said, listen to these words, Don't send us back to a life that's plain again. We who have shattered the continent's spine. Easy work, oh, we couldn't do that again. Haven't you something that's more our line? Got any rivers you say aren't crossable? Got any mountains you can't tunnel through? We specialize in the holy impossible, doing what nobody ever could do. My friend, that's what God wants to do with you if you'll let him, doing what nobody ever could do on their own. May you take that challenge up. May you live a life of joy and overcoming. And may you give praise to God the Father above for his goodness in your life. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our next hymn, and you can stay seated, is number 47. O come, let us adore him.
Look, an 18th century praise song. God has taught us to give as an act of faithfulness. We're reminded that giving is a Christian responsibility. Like Paul taught the early Christians, we're taught to be careful how we live, to live as wise people. Yet sometimes we're drawn by the promises, insufficient promises of our everyday culture. We end up giving with a begrudging attitude, a hesitant heart, or a selfish reluctance. May we be enabled in this very moment to give thanks to God the Father at all times for everything. And as our ushers come forward to take our morning offering, may you give joyfully and generously unto the work of his church here in Morning Sun. remain standing and say the unison prayer of dedication with me that's printed in your bulletin. Lord God, thank you for the blessings you have given us year after year. Help us to wisely use the time you have given us. Lead us while we remain here on earth to serve you through all the people around us who are in need. Amen. Please be seated. Now is the time when we have the joy and privilege of praying for and with each other. There are a number of prayer concerns which are listed in your bulletin. I ask you to look at them, pray over them, pray for them by name. For we are, have a God that delights in answering prayer according to his will. Let us come before God in prayer. Lord God, our Creator, Maker of the universe, we give you thanks and praise. You are almighty. You are such an awesome God. And you are all-knowing. You know our needs better than we do ourselves. Out of your love for us, you provide everything for us. Most of all, you've given us our salvation. Salvation which we couldn't earn. Salvation which we didn't deserve. Yet the Son came and lived among us and suffered and died for us to cleanse us of our sins and was raised again that we might have new life in Him. Abundant life filled with the Holy Spirit and then eternal life with you. And Lord, we give you thanks and praise that you have done so much for us. May we have a heart of 
gratitude and praise and thankfulness. Lord, may we have a mind that is eager to know your words and your will. And may we have a spirit that is willing to follow through on your calling. Lord, may we be bold for you in doing the seemingly impossible. And may we be agents of change through your Holy Spirit as he works through us. Lord, may we bring healing and reconciliation in the lives of those around us. Lay your healing hand upon all who are sick and are hurt, whether it be spiritual, physical, or mental. Lord, make them whole to serve your purposes and to do your will. Lord, may we be peacemakers in the biblical sense where we bring the assurance of salvation and the peace that comes of knowing that there is victory in the end and that we shall overcome. And Jesus, Prince of Peace, come back soon. Bring your peace to the entire world as every knee shall bow and every tongue confess your Lord. Holy Spirit, fill us. Fill us to overflowing so that we may, with every action we do, bring you praise. And Holy Spirit, be poured out on this church. Expand its boundaries and ministries. Keep it from evil. Fill this church with your presence that we might be a light in the darkness and a beacon of hope and joy that leads others to know the saving grace and mercy of Jesus Christ. And may we live our lives as witness and testimony to that love and grace in our own lives as we give praise to the Father above. For we ask this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, the same who taught his disciples when praying to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now if you'd stand, if you're able, for our closing hymn. It's number 231, Break Thou the Bread of Life.
Now may you be touched by the Spirit, recharged and renewed by your time here, ready to go out into the world, serving the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and being faithful witnesses to the calling he has given each one of you. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship and power of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forever. Amen. Amen.